Good morning, friends. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today, we are gonna have some fun. We are going to plant a whole slew of pansies here at the entrance down to the nursery. Now, if you have been following us for any length of time, you know, of course, that we are a grower retailer here in North Carolina, Creekside Nursery, and we are currently closed for the 2022 season. So all of our retail sales are done for this year. That means that any plants that are left here at the nursery are free game for Jenny. <laughs> uh, Jerry doesn't like me to say that, but in a way it's kind of true. So today we are going to plant a ton of pansies because there was a little bit of an order mix up and we received a ton of beautiful little pansy plugs that we actually grew ourselves. So by the time they were ready to sell, the season, like the retail season, was pretty much kind of over. In North Carolina, because we are a zone 7B, we can plant pansies and violas in the fall, winter, and they are like a winter crop for us. So they will continue to bloom throughout those cooler months. If you are in a much colder zone, that may be kind of foreign to you. You are used to planting them in like early spring and then can go through the summertime. For us, we can plant them anywhere from like September and then they go all winter and then about April, we'll need to take them out because it gets too hot for them and then we put our summer annuals in. So we have, like I said, a ton of beautiful pansies available to us that are going to go to waste if we don't plant them. So we are going to plant them today. The area that we are going to focus on today is going to be really kind of these little areas right up in this section on this side and then across the road over there. Um, before we get started, Jerry is going to uh, re-edge these beds because you can see just with, you know, the natural progression of the seasons, right? We need to redefine these edges. So we have the bedscaper over there. A lot of you were asking when we did the berm if we could give some more information about that. So we are going to show you this in action and exactly how it works. You will notice that I have um, our irrigation lines are showing there is weeds in here. So we're just going to tidy this whole area up. I do want to go ahead and place the pansies in here before we cover it with like a top you know, mulch kind of covering because I want to be able to see where my irrigation lines are. We have, <laughs> in the fall when we were taking out the annuals, we did um, accidentally cut one of the irrigation lines, so we need to fix that. So knowing where your irrigation lines are before you start, you know, uh, digging and planting and all that is a very good thing. So that way it just saves you work in the long run so you don't have to fix any kind of cut irrigation lines. Now, what are we gonna use to top dress this flower bed. We have a pallet full of the Espoma. Um, this is their organic raised bed mix. And we are going to test this out. Uh, of course, we love the Espoma products. We use the Biotone, all the tones here, the land and sea, you name it, we use it. We want to try this out. So this is going to be a good little test run to see how this does. Now you can plant directly in in this mix, we're going to use it more as a top dress and a, um, a mulch covering. It has, of course, you can see right here, it has the earthworm castings, the microtone, the alfalfa meal, kelp meal, feather meal, all sorts of great organic materials for your uh, beds. So that's really important when you are um, adding to your flower beds, however you're going to garden in those beds, you really want to enhance the whole environment of your soil. That is, your soil is like your right hand. They are your number one assistant in your garden. Because if you have a really healthy ecosystem in your soil, you're going to have very, very happy plants. The bad thing is, it's really hard to do overnight. This is a long-term process that you're going to either every season or once a year, you're gonna be adding those great nutrients to your soil in the forms of organic matters like compost, leaf litter, um, worm castings, uh, 
all of those great things, right, that really enhance where you build up the good bacteria, your earthworms, all those great things into your flower beds. So that is what we're going to use. We're going to test it out. Hopefully we will have enough uh, to get that done in these planting areas. While we are here, I want to give you an update on how some of the plants are doing that we planted. Um, so if you will remember, we did this flower bed with, uh, oh gosh, in the spring. I want to say it was the spring, not quite a year that we have had this flower bed as far as like with these shrubs. These are um, our deciduous azaleas and you can tell they're deciduous. They have lost all their leaves. This is Gibraltar. These are native azaleas. So they are deciduous gorgeous bright orange blooms in the spring. Those are done all the way throughout. Then we have the Chendo Viburnums. Chendo Viburnums are an excellent choice if you are looking for a fast growing evergreen that will give you lots of good structure year round. And these get to be a nice size. We'll trim them up in the spring. And when I say we're gonna trim them, like you can see we have that one rogue limb, right? And it's really tall. So we'll come in there and just gently shape it just very gently so it stays a nice tight compact form um, this one too has kind of one of those rogue limbs going up so what we can do is just come in here right here above your two leaves we'll top it out right there and then these two will become branches nice tight um, habit on those and then of course we have tea olives sweet osmanthus it's not really an olive so it's not going to produce <laughs> it's not going to produce olive fruit but what it does produce are these beautiful little white flowers that you can see in there and they have the most delicious fragrance wonderful evergreen we'll get nice tall structure we have three of them here on each corner and then i want to take you over here because we're also going to plant on this side of the road these two beds um, they're sisters they're not identical twins and so we like to plant them the same but they're not going to be in the exact same um, like the plants aren't going to be in the same arrangement coming over here um, right before the berm if you remember these are the steady eddy viburnums from proven winners planted uh two let's see six of them in here and they are doing really well um, of course we've had freezes and everything so they are deciduous but you can see where they were had started to put out some new um, growth before the freeze happened so that's really exciting these will be a lace cap uh, viburnum and gorgeous pretty white spring flowers and so we have them through here and then around here in the back so we can put this whole area with beautiful pansies jerry has gone to go get those for us because it's going to be a lot of them we also have some ornamental kale that we're going to use in the background for those as well so while i wait on him to come back with the plants i am going to go ahead and start weeding because we've got especially in that other flower bed that we were just at there's a lot of weeds in there and we need to get those out to uh, just tidy everything up then when he gets back we'll get the edger going and we'll explain how the edger works all right before jerry gets started with the bed edger we're going to go through and do a little tutorial on what this fantastic machine does um, so he's going to give you a little tutorial basic rundown on this machine and give you maybe some suggestions of where you can find it if you want to add this to your arsenal or like rent one for the weekend. So, Jerry, the floor yeah. is yours. I mean, um, the uh, Bedscaper by Easy Trench, okay? So you can go to easytrench.com. Um, they should be able to give you distributors and whatnot. They'd be able to order one of those from them. Um, this has a Honda engine on it. It's like a six, I don't know, things massive horsepower on it. So it's not it's not a rinky dink machine. So I mean this unit is made for over and over and over use for creating trenches and defined beds like what we're gonna do today. Um, this one is probably about three thousand dollars. So it may not be something you know that everyone wants to add to their arsenal just because of the cost but you can easily rent them from home depot or other rental places for the weekend and knock out your bed edge um just a simple you know regular engine on off 
you know, pull, choke, all that good stuff. You gas, it runs on gas. Um, I guess the big mechanics of it that everybody's so interested in is it was behind this little black curtain, okay? And you can see the teeth on there. That Those teeth, they, they really will hit some rock and go through some rock. That's why the shield is here. You can see up here on the top. You know, kind of where it's uh, thrown some rocks from underneath and just kind of punched up, so it kind of, it does protect you. But you can see that the different levels, the well, way they've got that guy designed in there, is just high to low. So that creates that, um, I guess, the curve back or the the slant in your bed. So I was mentioning last time it's probably best to start this on a two inch. You press this little handle here, and this guy will go down um, for two inches on this wheel here. The pin's stuck because everything's cold today. It is cold. We're a little chilly today. Yep. There, we, there go. we go. So it goes down. See, that's all the way down. So it's really hard to start a bed at that, but we're, we're just redefining what we did. So we're not gonna have a problem, so we're gonna go all the way down to seven. So, so that means we'll have a seven inch. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all the way, this thing's all the way down to the bottom. This one would be more like two inches and that's just your travel notch. So it adjusts these two tires here um, to, you know, set your depth on your cut. Gotcha, okay. all right. Makes sense? Makes sense. I mean, it's just that and it's just, and you pull it back. Pull it, and this, this, and this, this lever here controls your horsepower, and then you, you just kind of ease into it and cut, and then you just pull it back, and your tires are kind of your what your, you follow. Gotcha. You, you know, so the so because I know that somebody had said it when we used it the first time, they're like, "Why are you pulling it? Why don't you push it?" Yeah. You well, can't. it says it says it pull. says right there <laughs> on the machine yeah, the direction you, of travel. You can't push it while it's digging that way you've got to pull yes. it's easier to pull it's easier to pull and, and let the machine do the work yeah and it's designed to do that so right yeah. so that's i know somebody was going to ask yeah. so that's why we that's why we so do I, that. today i'd probably come in here and you know get my angle right on my stuff and then i'm just going to kind of follow the edge that we've already cut in gotcha a lot of times we just paint it down and you just follow the paint right okay all right So Jerry got all of the beds edged and they look fantastic. It was a little bit more challenging just because um, it is wet and so <laughs> we got some tons of rain. I don't even know how many inches of rain we got just uh, two days ago, yesterday? Yep. Yesterday morning, yesterday morning. And so this area of course was really kind of damp. And so that made it a little bit more challenging as far as getting uh, the trencher pulled through. But I wanna show you, or the bed edger rather, not a trencher. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like when you're done. And then you're gonna have to come back through and just then gently pull the soil back and kind of, you know, I don't know, feather it back. Jerry's using the trenching shovel because that's what we, that was in the, is in the Polaris. But you can see just that really nice defined edge um, right there. So like Jerry said, you could go anywhere from two inches to seven inches, nice, hard, hard edge on it. If it were the growing season, then this is where you can easily come back and maintain it. So you can mow really close and then with your trimmer, weed or whatever you want to call it, you come in and just clean that line up and then um, makes it nice and easy. Then what we do is we bring um, our mulch and we'll gently bring it down just a little bit so that we don't have any of that exposed soil showing. So he's going to go ahead and, and finish doing that. And then what I'm going to do is I think we're going to start on the bed behind me and I'm going to start laying out the pansies and the kale. So no, no, I'm not. Forget that. That's what I was going to do. I'm not going to lay them out. I'm going to top dress first, then we're going to lay out the pansies and the kale. I got to keep things straight in my brain. So we're going to lay out the 
compost the organic raised bed mix from Espona first. I want to share with you the um, plants that we're going to use in this project this morning. So we have got a bunch of little baby kale that, of course, kale is a cool weather crop, will do really nicely. We started these from little tiny plugs, um, so they were very small, and we have them in these, um, I don't know, that may be like a three inch container. You can see it's got nice roots down there. And they will, with the cooler temperatures as they grow, get more of that pinky red center. Get nice height to them. So we're gonna use this in the back. Again, these are plants that we had, so we're gonna go ahead and use them, put them to good use. And then we have the beautiful yellow and white. Uh, this is the uh, clear, Color Max Clear, I wanna say. I could be wrong on that. Uh, pansies. Now. Pansies are great because they have those nice, big, beautiful flowers on them. Uh, we've had, like this morning, it was 20, no, how cold was it? Anyway, it's quite chilly out here this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning, it's going to be 27. These do really well. Sometimes pansies will kind of stop blooming in January, February, coldest months of the year, take a break, and then as soon as the temperatures start to warm back up a little bit, then they will start blooming like crazy again. They will be gorgeous in the spring. That's why we're gonna really kind of fill up these entrance beds. So that way when the nursery opens in February, February, March, very first of April, these will be really pretty and look really nice um, to welcome our customers as they come in. So Jerry and Josh have some work that they are going to do. So I am going to finish this project on my own. So I'm going to basically set the camera up and then just get to work. We've laid out the raised bed mix, went ahead and top dressed, laid it all out on the flower beds. And then I'm just going to use my Hori Hori because that raised bed mix is nice and thick. These are not going to have to go too far in the ground. I'm going to place everybody out exactly where I want them and then just go back through with my hori hori and dig a little hole and plop them in. So this is like mass production here, mass planting, get them in the ground, get the job done uh, because we're going to have more rain the end of this week and then all next week. So let's get them in the ground, get them their roots nice and happy before, you know, the really cold of January hits. So that way they'll be nice and established and they will be very happy and just take off. So without further ado, that's what I'm going to do is get the camera set up, get all these plants kind of in the idea of where I want them, and then we're just gonna get to planting.
right, so we <laughs> this bed, man, whoo, about did me in, but it looks really, really pretty. I am very happy with it. Uh, I am at this smaller bed and then Jerry is planting over on the bigger side bed. So we're gonna go there in a second, but let me show you what I did here. Now the kale is probably gonna be a little bit hard to see just because it is small. Um, but basically I wanted to do like a, a really kind of a thicker section down here. So this is all kale and all in here, nice thick area. Um, Cause remember this kale's probably should get to be around 12 inches tall or more with that beautiful red center. So all the way in here. And then I've got a nice ribbon that goes all the way in the back. And then when it hits the viburnums, it starts to turn in just a little bit. So that's kind of the plan with that. And then I wanted the white pansies to go up against that kale. I think that those two will pop really nice with each other. So you can see where the whites are a little thicker on the outside a double row in the back and then swooshes on around back to that bigger size of that kale and then of course the yellow in the center to give it a nice big pop now there was absolutely zero rhyme reason measurement when i was placing these it was literally i was walking and slapping them down i was like well you look to be about the right spacing apart from each other Pansies can easily go, you know, you can, it depends on how you want it to look, right? So when they're full, do you want them touching each other and to have like a carpet? If that's what you want, then you need to place them pretty close together. Mine probably are anywhere from 10 to 12 inches apart because I have such a large space. And yes, I did have tons. I could have put more pansies in here, but whatever you place down, then you have to dig the hole and put it in the ground. Super easy to do though, using that raised bed mix. I did not use my auger because it was just so fluffy and it just took me, you know, not any time at all to get my hoary hoary in there, do it, pull it back a little hole and plop it in there. Um, so that was super easy to do because this was nice, tilthy, fluffy soil, not hard to do at all. So let me show you over here on the other side, what is going on with Jerry and what he is doing. Um, he and Josh were had a meeting of the minds. So they were doing some strategies and planning for over there at the production lot, not production, retail lot. And um, so we had lunch and after lunch they were done. And so he graciously came and volunteered to help me. So here, remember I tell you that these beds are sisters. They are not identical twins. You can also see that he has a different method of, of tossing the pots, which Brenna probably will absolutely love, uh, where I stack them up nice and neat. Poof, there you go. He's more of the method right now of doing this like plant and go. That man can, he is in production mode. I love it, very fast. But what we're doing is kind of the same idea. A thicker section of kale down here, a ribbon behind Jerry, and then it swooshes out and then comes back in. Then did big, huge pocket of white back there, smaller ribbon of white all the way back in to this kale. And then here in the center, we're gonna have a huge um, splash of yellow all right there together. For not, you know, measuring these and being really precise on the placement. They look pretty organized if I do say so myself. I do have, um, and I don't think this is even all of them, but left here on the trailer, I've got, gosh, I don't know, two, four, six, eight, maybe nine flats of white and what, five flats of yellow right here. So we've got more up at production. So prop, not today, but another day, I will add them into the berm somewhere, probably up top. That way it'll all kind of tie in together. I am not sure if you can see that over at the house, um, kind of over in this direction, I have yellow violas. So we're gonna have kind of some color consistency going through here with those yellows. The yellows just really pop and they, you see them from a great distance. Even those violas over there at the front porch, even though they are small, right, the violas are smaller, they are just putting out some color. So to have that bright yellow will be really fun. The white popping off of it. 
and the kale is going to look really nice. So I'm going to come over here, help him finish up, and then we're going to be done with this project for today. All right, my friends, so today's project is complete. The entrance beds to the nursery have been all planted out and they look very, very happy, very cheery with all of their sweet color. This will be a lot of fun to watch grow right now. Um, there is not a ton of sunshine in this spot because this is winter sun. So fingers crossed that everybody's gonna get enough sunlight and just thrive. Um, of course, come springtime, lots of good sunshine they'll bounce back um, if they don't do well right now but i have great hopes for this and like jerry said he said even if they don't get enough sunlight they look great now and it was well worth it because they look beautiful and just very happy and cheery but having your big spaces you want to go with big blocks of color right because we are out here in the middle of the wide open, so I can't just plant a couple of pansies. I've got to do massive amounts. And as they grow, they just get bigger and they're very happy. And then everybody will blend together and it makes a big impact from a distance, which is what we want. But having this blend in the flower bed is really going to add to the overall nutrition of our soil. It is plenty of food for these pansies and kale. So they will do great. We do have irrigation in this flower bed, but because it is December and we have notoriously wet winters, we do not run our irrigation in the wintertime. In fact, this probably won't even run until like late April, I would think. So the likelihood of us even needing to turn on irrigation for these pansies and kale is really, really low. Uh, the ground was already nice and moist because we had plenty of rain yesterday for like uh, we had inches of rain. And then in the coming days, we're gonna have more and I think like all next week, they're calling for chances of rain. So I don't have to worry about you know, them getting enough water. They are good. That's the beautiful thing about cool weather plants is they don't require tons of water like our summer annuals do. So basically it's just kind of plant them and forget them and just walk away. If we get into later on in the season, and I noticed that the pansies are really kind of, maybe they're not as dark green or maybe they're not flowering as much as they should. I don't foresee that being a problem because of us using this soil, but you absolutely can use your liquid fertilizer on your pansies or violas. That's a wonderful thing to give them a great boost of food, especially if they're in containers. I have some on the back patio that are in containers. So when it rains, it really kind of leaches out all the nutrition out of that potting soil. So I do need to come back in and use my liquid fertilizer. Would not recommend using time release fertilizer unless you're in really warm climates because that time release fertilizer is released by temperature. So even if you put it out, it's not doing any good. If you're in, even in North Carolina, the temperatures are not warm enough. But if you're in Florida or maybe South Texas or warm parts of California, you absolutely could use you know a time release fertilizer because you would be warm enough and those plants would get fed that way. But Really fun, really cheery, nice little pop of color here. Can't wait to see how everybody grows and develops. Um, yeah, so it was a good day's work. As always, we so appreciate you. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.